There we go. Welcome, Jamie. Uh, how are you getting on? Big as a Spurs fan. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, it's been a fantastic window. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. But first of all, just to touch on uh, this performance yesterday against Manchester United, it was uh, a crazy, crazy game. What did you make of it? Yeah, it was it was incredible, really, wasn't it? Um, you know, to go to Man Old Trafford and win six one is just incredible. I think you know, watching them growing up, um, Manchester United at Old Trafford, there, you know, to know one day that we'd go and win at like that scoreline is just incredible. But the performance was magnificent. I thought that you know, the first minute aside, um, we controlled the game throughout, and it was just a very typical Jose Mourinho performance. I thought there was fantastic moments on the counter attack. Um, you know, everyone worked so hard for the cause. Um, and yeah, it was just, you know, it was a collective. It was brilliant. There was so many brilliant individual performances as well. Um, I, I can't really fault anyone's performances. I think, you know, if you, you were to rate everyone's performance out of 10, I, I can't see giving anyone lower than an eight. So mm -hmm. it was just incredible yesterday. And I think it's a, a sign of what maybe Spurs can do this season. Yeah, no, I fully agree with you. I think the Pierre Abid Hoybier, first of all, yesterday was absolutely sensational. And it's, I think, encouraging for us that we have seen such a quick turnaround, I suppose, from the disappointment in at the start of the season against Everton. You know, it's been so quick that we've become su such a strong force. And uh, Hoybier outstanding yesterday. Uh, Regulam was outstanding as well. Doherty, unfortunate, I think, not to be in the team. But who would you say is our best signing of the window so far? Blimey. Um, well, I mean, I think it's very difficult to not say Gareth Bale. Um, mm, I think, obviously, yeah. he, he... In Venice, I think that that has given the club a huge lift. I think that after that Everton game, I think because it was so low, I think that signing of Bale just really gave us such a massive lift. So that was a big signing. Um, as you mentioned, Hoybe yesterday, I thought he was man of the match for me, actually. Um, mm. I thought the way he worked in the middle, um, he was, you know, his work rate was absolutely sensational. Um he's exactly what we needed. We needed someone who was going to sit in there and do more defensive work in the midfield. And he was perfect yesterday for us. Um, it was, uh, he just seems like a typical Jose Mourinho player, a guy that works absolutely relentlessly, um, that's willing to do a job for the team. And um, yeah, it was obviously a slow start for him at, against Everton, but I mean, he's, he's mm. very quickly got up to speed now. And, and that's great to see, because I think you look at some of the signers last year, the Ndombele, Le Celso and Session, all took a long time to settle into the team. But, you know, as you mentioned, Regulon, um, Doherty, they've all been quite quick in, in settling in, as, as has Hoybier. So, yes, yeah, obviously been a great start from the new signing. So, really pleased with that. Yeah, look, it's, I've been saying kind of the change so far, it's a strange feeling as a Tottenham fan to be in a position on deadline day where you're relaxed and you feel as though the business is done. And that's, you know, it's, it wouldn't be the end of the world if you don't get someone in today. But, of course, the one name we all want to see is, is Milan Skriniar. Um, do, you think, do you think that could happen today? Um so it sounds like they are looking for a centre back. I think uh, if you see Alistair Gold, <laughs> um, he's, he's very um, he's made it very clear that Spurs are looking and they're going to try. But I think at this stage it's very difficult. I think with Milan Skriniar, I think that that sort of size deal, I think it's very difficult now uh, to see that yeah. getting over the line. It's a shame because I think he would have been perfect for Spurs. I think we're probably one central defender away, one really top central defender away from, from putting in a serious serious title challenge. Mm. Um, so it's a, it's a shame, but, you know, I think Inter, at the end of the day, I think, yes, they were probably willing to sell him because Conte wanted to bring in new players and I think that he wasn't being used as much. But I think ultimately, you know, he's a guy I think they see as a long-term part of their plans. Conte might not be there next year, so they're always going to ask for a lot of money. So, unfortunately, I don't think we'll see Skriniar this window, but maybe it's one we might go and revisit in January. But... It's a shame it would have been the perfect way to end the window um, because, as you said, you know, we've gone and sorted so many of our big problems this uh, this summer. I think that's amazing that you, you imagine that we, at the start of the window, would have gone and dressed both fullbacks. Wasn't expecting that. We've gone and got the holding midfielder. Um, we've got the backup striker. And then, of course, we've got Gareth Bale on top of all that. So, um, yeah, look, I'm not going to complain with what we've done. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. It's been, it's been a ridiculous window. It's a strange one that... I think it did kind of start slowly with a few small signings, but of course took off very quickly and we were in a fantastic mm. position now. But I'm not sure if you saw the news on uh, Christian Eriksen for the Insider 247 saying that we've actually been offered the chance to sign Christian Eriksen uh, on loan at the moment. What, what do you make of that? Um, I think that's another position that Spurs maybe we could have looked at. Um, I think a lot of people suggested that we were missing a, a kind of a creative midfielder. Um, for me, I wouldn't want to see Christian Eriksen back at the club. I think that, um, you know, for the last 18 months or so, um, he's not really been the same player. I think it's been confidence for him. It just hasn't quite been there. I think that towards the end of his time at Spurs, 
he knew that he was getting a move away. I think he was playing very cautious. I think he was very trying to play within himself, didn't want to get an injury. Um, but he's not really been the same player. And I don't think it's a good idea to kind of go back for that sort of player. Um, mm. I would maybe think that Spurs could have done with maybe another creative midfielder. You see Lo Celso out yesterday again, which is so frustrating because he's such a good player. And I think that, you know, it's, it's crazy to think we did that yesterday, even without someone like Celso, who, who has been so important for us. But, you know, maybe we could have done with another creative midfielder. But again, I, you know, when you've brought someone in like Gareth Bell, I think that when you've got that sort of quality to add and that creativity, then uh, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that the craziest thing about yesterday was we did it without Bale, we didn't have Lacelso, we didn't have Doherty, we didn't have Oliver Ireland. It was, it was, of course, a very strong team, but it was far from, from full of strength. And coming at the end of such a hectic time with like four games coming in the space of a week, it's... I think it kind of shows what Jose Mourinho is adding to us and maybe the one thing we were missing in the Pochettino era and that is that winning mentality and that mm. kind of determination just to be able to grind out these victories. You know, we saw it against Chelsea, especially on Tuesday. Do you think we're kind of starting to see the benefit of having Jose Mourinho at the club uh, yeah, more than I, just the tactics? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I think the Lamella situation was a perfect example of what Jose Mourinho is all about. I mean, yes, it's not something that we want to see as Spurs fans. Yes, as football fans, it's not great when you see a player go down like that, but... That's why Jose Mourinho's sides have got 20, 20 trophies collectively because, as he said in the documentary, you know, nice guys never win. And I think that's exactly what he wants to see from his team. You know, maybe if Lamella hadn't gone down and reacted the way he had, Martial would have got sent off. But yeah. and, and then ultimately, what, what shows is that Spurs won 6-1. They came away with the three points. The red card won't get a lot of focus. And, and yeah, this is, you know, I think that was a big turning point in the game. I still think we would have gone on to win regardless had, we, had the red card gone in our favour or not. But, you know, I think that was a big sign. But there is seriously a mentality now that there is that belief that we can get through these games. That was a ridiculous start to the season. What was it? Seven games in 18 days. Um, and I think that's sort of something Jose Mourinho lives for, where his teams are kind of, their backs against the wall. Um, everyone's against them. And But Jose Mourinho seems to always live up to that. And, um, yeah, I think it was, you know, we are definitely now seeing the benefits of, of having a Jose Mourinho type manager in charge. Yeah, no, it's it's... I think there was a lot of negativity, I suppose, or a bit of, a bit of worries when he did come in. That you know, given his, the way things went from at Manchester United, he said he'd reinvented himself as a manager. He said he took his time off and he he evaluated himself as a, both as a person and as a manager. We saw him bring in a completely new uh, sort of management team, bringing a lot of people in from Lille, uh, I suppose managers, coaches who were known for their for their attacking football. And he he does seem to be a, a very different di- uh, different manager. Do you agree? Yeah, he, he does, doesn't he? Um, I mean, there's still signs of that he's still totally up for it now, and I still think he's still very much motivated. But yeah, I think it's it's definitely been a good change for him. I think that he's definitely more settled living in London. I think at Manchester United, it wasn't something where he was particularly happy at. Um, but as I said, he's back in London now. He's kind of mm. you know even able to live with his family. He's got new coaching staff in, and and Joao Sacramento. I think to a guy that's done a fantastic job behind the scenes. I think that. He's obviously a guy that's always dreamed of working with Jose Mourinho. And I think that that's definitely pushing Jose Mourinho to be a better manager. But, you know, you can't criticise the football we're playing at the moment. Um, To score six yesterday, seven on Thursday. um, And then, of course, that second half against Chelsea, the Newcastle game, the Southampton game. You know, the performances are so much better now. And and the players seem to be buying into to to, to Jose Mourinho's philosophy. Um, just everything that they're doing is yeah, it's fantastic and um, you can't fault the football at the moment and as I said Gerard Mourinho just looks so settled Yeah no it's, it's great and it's great that the manager is settled but it seems as though a few players uh, at the club may not be we've seen Cesc Young go out on loan today uh, we saw Foyth leave yesterday there's still some rumours about the future of Deli Alley although it looks as though he will be staying um, what, what departures do you think we may see at Tottenham today? Um, oh, blimey. Um, I'd like to see Danny Rose go. I think that that's something that needs to happen. Um, yeah. It's strange, though, because he's not had anyone linked with him. Um, I think I said yesterday on the documentary, um, I don't think the documentary would have done him any favours in terms of um, building his profile up. I think that that def- sure. definitely did portray him in a very good light. Um, so, I mean, in that regard, maybe it's not too much of a surprise. He didn't have a good time at Newcastle either. So, it's strange. We haven't seen any sort of news um, of him being linked with other clubs. So, um, you know, maybe that's one that will get addressed after the close of the window. Um, maybe we might have to terminate his contract or something. I think that it's just best that we part ways with Danny Rose. Um, I think we need players there that are all pulling in the same direction. And 
Unfortunately, Danny Rose isn't, I don't think he's, you know, he's definitely not in the manager's plans and he's certainly not a guy that, that's going to be of any use to us this year. So um, hopefully we'll see his future resolved. I think Gazaniga is another one um, that will go. Um, again, it's you know not really been linked with too many clubs. I saw there was a little mention of Liverpool, um, which is obviously no surprise after their, their scoreline yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe Cameron Carter-Vickers as well might leave, but again, it's you know there's not really been much talk of where they might go, and that's been an issue at Spurs moving on these sort of fringe players. Um, it's nice to see that Joe Demir has been ruthless in getting rid of some of them, but you know we we'll have to wait and see where kind of where they're going to go because there's not been much talk about it at the moment. Yeah, no, I think we, we will see, as you say, I think Gazaniga, I'm surprised personally to see that kind of Joe Hart has been identified as, as the second choice, but maybe maybe mm. Gazaniga has wanted to leave for a, a bit longer than we do realise. But as you mentioned, we saw Liverpool slip up, ridiculous result yesterday, losing 7-2 to, to Aston Villa. We've seen Man City drop points against Leeds and, and Leicester in the last couple of weeks. All of a sudden, the mood around Tottenham is a lot more positive and around a lot of other teams, there's, there's a bit of worries there. Do you think we could be in for a title challenge this season? Um... Yeah, I, I do. I think at this stage, you've got to say that we're definitely in contention. I mean, you look at that front three that we have now. Um, I mean, it's arguably on par with Liverpool's, um, you know, with Bale, Son and Kane. I mean, when you say that, I mean, it's just, it sounds absolutely ridiculous. You look at the way that Son and Kane are playing at the moment. Absolutely. I think they're the best attacking duo in the world at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. The midfield's fantastic. I think we've got fantastic fullbacks. The one area I'm slightly concerned about is maybe the centre-back. I think, as I said, we could have done with maybe one more um, but look, I think we're definitely in with a chance. It's wide open now. You see Man City struggling, Liverpool yesterday. I mean, that's a, that is a really big turning point, really, for Liverpool to lose like that scoreline um, against a team like Aston Villa is huge. So um, I think the one concern for me would be how we're going to manage Thursday and Sunday football. I think, and, you know, you see teams yeah. in the park that struggle with managing Europa League football and, and doing well in the Premier League. So that, that, for me, is a concern. And then, of course, we've started the season so early and with so many games. So um, I think with Wolves, we saw it last year. They kind of blew up towards the end. So that's I think, so that's something to keep an eye on, definitely. But, um, yeah, I, th I think for Spurs right now, you have to say that we're, we're certainly in contention for a potential title challenge. Yeah, no, to be honest, I, I do think I agree to you to some extent. I've, I've been trying to stay a bit kind of grounded in the last couple of weeks, saying, you know, we're just too far behind. Obviously, we're improving, but you do have to kind of take into consider consideration where other teams are. But it seems like they're coming backwards, we're going forwards. I think mm. we could see something interesting this season. But in terms of silverware as well, do you think for domestic ups and maybe the Europa League, do you think we could see something in the trophy cabinet? Oh, I, th I think we have to this year. I think that you, you look at the business that we've done um, and in the manager that you've got in, and Jose Mourinho, as I said, he's won 20 major trophies. I think that it's more of an expectancy now for Spurs to go in and that, that, that wait for a trophy. It's something that we've desperately needed to do for a long time. I think the fact that it's been 12 years, um, I think that's hindered us a lot. I think that, that that kind of that cloud over our heads is, is kind of, there's not really that belief, but now you're starting to see that Mourinho's teams, they are starting to believe that we can win something. Um, he's bringing in the right sort of players. I think, you know, there was a specific profile of player targeted. We wanted to get players in that were uh, ready-made, had the right attitude. And um, you, you think that there's got to be a, a trophy come to, you know, coming to Spurs this, this, this season. Um, I think the, the Europa League for me is the one I'd like to win the most. Obviously, gets you back into the Champions League. It's still a major trophy. It's obviously something Spurs have, have won in the past and we want to hopefully win again. Jose Mourinho's got a fantastic track record there. So that would be a competition I'd love to see Spurs win, um, of course. Um, and the Carabao Cup, I think that we've got a great opportunity and to do well in that now. Um, you know, Stoke, although it's an away fixture, I think it's definitely a, a game that Spurs will, look to, will be hoping to get past um, and expecting to do so. Uh, and then you're in the semi-finals. You've got a great, a great chance of winning that competition. So... Um, I, I, I think for me it's more of an expectancy that Spurs are going to win a trophy this year Yeah, again I, I agree with you on that as well it's, it's a strange position to be in as Spurs fan kind of yeah. expecting a trophy um, just quickly before I let you go uh, there's kind of some developments on John Stones I don't know if you saw David Ornstein saying we discussed a, a loan deal with Man City for, for Stones yesterday now a few more sources coming out and saying Tottenham are looking to sign him on loan with a view to a permanent deal um, I suppose not, the, not the, one of the best centre-backs that we could target but do you think Stones could be a good signing? Um I'd, I, I would say no, because I don't think he's kind of the right profile defender for Jose Mourinho. You look at Juan Foyt, I mean, we all know he's a very talented player, but clearly he was a guy that 
love to play up in the back, they love to carry the ball forward. And I think Stones is that similar sort of player where he likes to play up from the back and he, he definitely has that sort of mistake in him. So for me, and, and, and you look at his form recently anyway, uh, it's not been particularly ideal. Um, I'd rather Spurs, I don't think necessarily Spurs need numbers. I don't think that we need to go and sign centre-back to make up numbers in the squad. I think we just needed someone of real quality. Um, Skriniar for me would have been perfect. I think he fitted the Jose Mourinho pro profile perfectly. Um, but John Stones doesn't do that for me. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I probably would say no to, no to John Stones. Yeah, and no, I think uh, judging from the chat for this live stream when you first heard the news from Orange, I think that is the general feeling. There yeah. are a few more better targets we can go out and get. Uh, anyway, thank you uh, very much, Jamie, for joining me in the stream today. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. And uh, anyone, go Great follow uh, Daily Hotspur on Twitter if you're not already, but I'm, I'm sure you are. Thanks, William Jamie. Thank you very much. Cheers.